lady ballers. Welcome back. We're Soccer Props. And it's game time. We're so excited to have a wonderful guest, Jamia Fields, on the podcast today. She is a baller. She went to FSU. She played on a bunch of different NWSL teams, and she currently plays for the Houston Dash. Jamia is also a member of the Black Women's Player Collective, and we're so excited to hear more about her hopes, dreams, and her goals for the collective. And we're excited to tell you guys about how you can join it and support it as well. Hi. Hey, how are you? How are y'all doing? We are we're good. How are you? I'm happy we, I could get on. This is great. So you're in Houston right now? Yes. In Houston, our official start date was February 9th, but, you know, some people were here already early, but, like, so technically this is day two, but we've been kind of going, going at it, so, but it's been good. So is it all fitness, or is it everything the first few days? Um, it's, it's been kind of everything, but a lot, actually a lot of fitness, and I haven't done, I mean, at the end of last year, we started doing fitness. We got a new strength coach and stuff like that. But I really didn't do fitness in college or, like, in the years leading up, like, the other pro years. Not since high school in club soccer. So this is, like, crazy. But it's – it's Well, bless your soul. Yeah. You are <laughs> – What? I know. I didn't do fitness in college. We were, like, abused in college. <laughs> Not literally, but we no, would – Literally. <laughs> a lot of my friends, too, they say in college, like, it was terrible. I'm like, we never ran. I'm like, I don't know. I got blessed. That's amazing. I'm I'm actually surprised, at, especially at FSU. Yeah, it, it was. That's amazing. Like, a lot of like the drills, like, or fitness in the drills. Yeah. And yes. So, and I love that way more. So, which is how it should be, right? Yeah, we're realistic. All fit too. So I'm like, if, okay, if you can get fit while getting it in the drills, like, you might as well touch the ball more and stuff, but. Is that something that, yeah. what do I know? How did you, you know a lot. How did you find yourself at FSU? Like, how was your recruiting process? Um, so, well, I think they saw me when we did, like, regional team, and there was a tournament in Florida, because obviously, like, I was on the West Coast, did not want to leave California, like, was, like, there's so many good West Coast schools out there, but, I mean, I took my visit, I took visits, like, everywhere, honestly, like, I wasn't counting anybody out. So when I went to Florida State, I was like, I really like this, you know? And maybe I'm a homebody, so I'm like, maybe it'll be a good change, like, going across country, and it w- it really was, so. <laughs> Do you feel like because you saw a lot of colleges, it, it gave you more confidence when you felt like one was right? Yes, like, seriously, like, I, that's why I recommend, like, you know, to anybody who's in that process to just take all the visits, because... I did, I did some California school visits and I, they were great, but also, I don't know, just experiencing a different culture and stuff. It's just so different in the South and I love, I loved it, but yeah, going to like different States and seeing if I liked it or like different coaches and I don't know, but yeah, it was good. I liked it. Yeah. Cause you can see what doesn't work too, you know, like you of course see what you like, but you're like, you know what, like maybe the classes are way too big at this one school or like the exactly. soccer field is way too far away from my dorm. Like, those yes, yeah, matter. right. <laughs> yep. There was so many things. And now that I think about it, there's so many things that you have to like take into account when you're picking a school. And I forgot about all those things, but um, <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Do you have any um, like highlights, like really amazing moments from college that, um, that you can't forget, like un- unforgettable moments, like anything that comes to mind? unforgettable moments like when you scored the winning goal in the championship <laughs> <I know>. maybe <laughs> I mean honestly yeah like I feel weird like if I had to bring that up myself but that was honestly you know like I'm just like but we were that, pitching you a slow ball it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> but that was the best moment honestly and like it was my senior year too and like leading up to it we had been to the final four every year so I was like honestly it was like my senior year I was like it would be too good to be true almost but like and then it was like it happened and I was like wow and then me scoring honestly it was like it was huge for me but. that's honestly that's how every everyone wants their college career to end <laughs> right. yeah. exactly like that <laughs> was the case for us like we lost in our final in the end season <laughs> yeah oh, I'm so that- sorry I know, but you know what? You're you're so blessed. Like that, of course, you worked your butt off to to get to that point too. Right. You were forward in college. 
Yeah, like a winger, yeah. And are you still playing forward or the outside mid? Yeah, so I'm, but I can also play, I've been, you know, try to outside back as well. So I feel like a lot of, like, um, pros, like, coaches, like, are transitioning, and even on the national team, too, uh, forwards to outside back. So yeah. I could do both. I, that I, transition I, I, makes no sense in my brain, but no, it's happening no. all the time. Like, I mean, I was a forward. The, literally the last place on earth I should be stuck is as a defender. See? But, I mean, you see Crystal Dunn getting thrown into that sort of situation. Right. Like, right. so many players make themselves versatile that way. Yeah. I think as if, if the coach wants that wing back, like, you know, like wanting a forward as a defender, like as another form of attack, but also you could de- you're good at defending as well. Yeah. So – I mean, I don't really mind it because it would be weird if I was going from, like, playing the nine to, like, playing outside back because then I'd be like, no, I don't ever have to defend. But I played <laughs> nine all, like, all of club soccer, high school. When I went to FSU, they switched my position, like, right when I got there. So I played all four years at winger. And so, like, now when I'm trying to outside back or different positions, I'm like, my position was changed even going from like, like, cause when you're going to high school to college, it's like, well, the level is changing. I want to be comfortable, but I didn't have that option. They're like, we're switching your position. Yeah. And so I had to just learn it. So whenever I'm tried like at different positions in the pros, I'm like, okay, I, even though it's a different level from like college, I just gotta learn it. So it was good. Yeah. It's a good mindset to acquire. How do you feel like you changed as a player from a uh, freshman to senior year in college? Well, Freshman to senior year in college. Well, first of all, I just feel like you learn about your body more, number one. I just like thinking about what I used to eat as a freshman. <laughs> we laugh about this all the time. <laughs> yeah, like what, I was, like, what was I doing? Like, what was I doing? Like, why was – and we spoke like, with nutritionists and stuff, and I would still go home and just like do whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I definitely learned about my body more over the years and, you know, how to get my optimal best out of it. Um, but also just, like, Florida State, I just learned so much on the field. Mark, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mark, but Kokorian, he's just such a good coach. I just learned so much. And, I, I mean, that that could be, like, yeah, I learned a lot, but I'm not even kidding. Like, there was just so much film. It was, like, he was trying to like make it a professional environment in college. And I, sometimes I was like, well, this isn't the pros, this is college, but you know, like it should be college, but no, I appreciated that. And I gained so much knowledge. So yeah, I would say those are the two big things. How did you, did you always want to play in the NWSL? Actually? Yeah. I mean, I knew I always wanted to play professional soccer and obviously a goal is always national team. I feel like if you're at this high level. And um, when I was in college, I remember watching NWSL games, but it was weird because I feel like when I first started college, NWSL wasn't a thing. And mm-hmm. then it trans it like and then I know some players are going to play like overseas and you know because the league had folded or something. I, I'm trying to remember. But then when it came back I'm like, oh, well, I have a chance. Like, if, it, if the league holds, like, you know, I can play pro. And that was always a dream of mine. Yes. So you knew – so your senior year, you were like, I'm going to go into the draft. Yes. Right after this? Yes. That, that's so awesome. Yeah, so can awesome. you tell us about, like, your NWSL experience? Like, what teams you played on from there? Yeah. So I have kind of – well, not kind of bounced around because I feel like there's some players who have been on more teams than me, which – you meet a lot of people you got you get to play in different places it's you know it's a good way to look at it but so I got drafted to Boston then I ended up signing with Western New York in my rookie season so I played there and then there was an expansion draft so Orlando so I got picked up for that so I was there 2016-2017 then ended up going to Norway in 2018 so cold not meant for the cold at all. Like <laughs> I am a California girl who went to Florida State. Like it was like, and then I was going to Norway. I was like, this is about to be really interesting. So, but it was a good experience. We got to play Champions League. I got to go to France, Germany. I got to go to Oktoberfest. It was amazing. I <laughs> we played Lyon in Champions League, which is they're so good. They're just so good. Um, got to travel a little bit, so that was cool. And then 2019 
went came back to Houston. I'm like, I have family in Houston. Let me try it out in Houston. Um, I've been here ever since. So, yeah. Soccer has literally brought you <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And it's been fun. It honestly has been fun. I think in 2018, I went to over five countries, honestly. Wow. And I would never had imagined that. I didn't even know. I was. I knew I wanted to play overseas at some point, but I just didn't know when. And nor did I think I'd be traveling that much. So I am very thankful. You're probably really happy you did that before the pandemic happened. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Right? I feel, yes. I feel like I'm pissed at myself that I didn't travel more before this. I you know. You travel a lot for work, but like, right. isn't, isn't it crazy when you think about it? Like, that's really cool you were able to do that. All right, before. and had no idea the pandemic was coming. I remember I, because I do mission trips in the off seasons, usually this year we couldn't do one, but 2019 off season, we went to Peru, and I remember it was just about to be like 2020 or whatever, and like we were going to Peru and we like were looking at our phones like wait like COVID like it was just starting but like it wasn't really a thing we didn't really think it was gonna come to America I don't know but I just remember that that was like the last trip I had been on <laughs> before it all hit so I'm like wow do you feel like being on all those different teams helped shape you like the player you are today did you learn different things from all the teams that you have been on definitely I mean Starting out at the Western Europe Flash, it was like we were all really young. It was like it consisted of like Samuel. It's empty courage, really, right now. So we saw you play. I think we saw you play. We were there. Yeah, at- Paul was coaching, right? Oh no! So I left the oh. year before Paul came. Oh okay. Yes. So and they ended up winning the NWSL championship the year after I left. Like yeah. I was like I just missed it, but yeah, in Orlando, of course. <laughs> Right. In Orlando, we were just struggling. But yes, playing on different teams have definitely like helped me. So many different players, obviously friendships, but like the style of play on each team is usually different. And then going to Orlando, getting to play with like Marta, like she was like my um, idol growing up. So it was just crazy being able to have that experience and her style of play is so different from like what I've seen. Um, I've also like in college too when I we got to go play in like Japan for two months we because our my assistant coach coach was Japanese and we got to train with their youth academies and that Japanese style compared to America and then going to Norway and then playing different European teams I've just seen so many different styles and it just makes you really appreciate the game more and um yeah it's been really fun that's so cool. I feel like, like just like languages, there's different languages of soccer. And like you learn so much by like going to those places and, and playing with people from there. That's awesome. Yes, yes. And even like with the mission trips too, I've been to Peru, Costa Rica, and Africa. And it's just like, we don't speak the same language. Talking about the universal language is the game. And it doesn't even have to be a real goal. It doesn't even have to be a real ball. Like in Africa, they're making it out of like, leaves and stuff and I'm just like that is just so beautiful and we just all could connect just because of like the game and I'm like that's amazing that's I so love that I want to go on a mission trip with you <laughs> oh like seriously I don't know when the next one's gonna be um and I've been with two different organizations one was a while ago and but usually I go with this organization out of Cleveland called Ambassadors. And it's just, it's just amazing. So I know we, we should make that happen because they are honestly life-changing. Yeah. Tell us next time. Well, when traveling's allowed. Okay. It- <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Um, so tell us about the Challenge Cup. What was that like? The Challenge Cup. Oh, okay. It, <laughs> it's just so crazy that we were in that bubble situation. But then coming out winning, it was just a mix like of feelings also you know with everything going on with the race situations and it was just a lot different topics you know but coming out winning it was just like a cherry on top really um but it was hard being in the bubble for you know those weeks and (laughs) not being able to leave and just walk in the parking lot was it. And then when you look at look at your window, it's just like a grass field. Like, just a grass field. It was like you really had to, like, get, have yourself together mentally. And if you didn't, you'd have to, like, click back in, you know, because we had, you had games to play. You had trainings to still do. But 
it was really cool that we won for sure. Yeah, yeah there was really no escape mentally at all, right? Like no. really all you had was that and soccer. <laughs> Literally. And when I, but like it, like looking back on it, it's like, okay, like I did that or like we did that. Like we got through that and it just feels like an accomplishment. Not only winning, like even the other teams who like, they didn't come out winning. It's like, you still made it through. Yeah. You're part it was of that. <laughs> yeah. What are your hopes for the dash this season? Ooh, I would love to keep the, you know, the winning streak we got going and we have a lot, like our group is really good. We connect really well um, on and off the field, which has been nice. So yeah, hopefully we can continue winning. I believe we can do it because I mean, I know everyone says that about their team. Like I believe we can win, but honestly, I just think the fight that we've shown, like that we showed in the challenge cup is, you know, we still have that in us now. So. Nice. I love that. Do you, have, do you have almost this, like a very similar roster to that team or has there been a lot of additions and changes? There's been some changes, but I feel like the, the team principles insta- are like the same. So I feel like anybody who's brought on board has been, you know, has fit right in, which is great. So that's awesome. Yeah. So tell us more about the Black Women's Player Collective. I want to hear like all about it. Give us, give us the breakdown, the details. Yeah, so it's been great. It's been a lot of work. It's about seven of us on the board, I believe. And we have just been working to just really come together as an organization. And but our, like, our goal is to just elevate Black girls and women, really, who play the sport, who don't play the sport, health and wellness, whatever we can do, mentoring. So we're trying to collaborate with brands to just support us women, girls, black women, black girls. And so it it has been a lot of work because we're just starting it from the ground up literally. But it's just like, I didn't have like something like this growing up, you know, and the, you know, soccer is a predominantly white sport. So me growing up, it would have been nice to see some powerful women to like look up to because, you know, I just, you know, I look back and I'm like, I didn't really have many women around me that looked like me to inspire me. It was more like my family Mm -hmm. and the, you know, the group I had around me, like telling me I can do and believing in myself. And um, obviously my faith is huge, but when I like think about, it would be just so like so much easier inspiring to see other women in soccer, black women successful to be like, yes, I can do it. Um, Serena Williams for me I played tennis growing up and Serena and Venus you know grew up in California they were black women so that they were huge um, inspirations for me and created a lot of my drive growing up but I didn't really have that in soccer as much I know there were some great black women um, in soccer but those are the the inspirations for me yeah, and the the spotlight hasn't been there even when they were there. It, so you know, like, and we, that's, we that's, you, yes, we think back to growing up, and and even me growing up, uh, all if you asked me for the reference in my mind would have been Serena Williams or Venus Williams, like that, and that was that was well, it. And, like they were supposed to hold the whole yeah. community, and all inspiration was supposed to come from one place, and that is just not the way that it should be. And it's so great now to see representation on the national team representation all throughout the nwsl and then things like this players collective that are just gonna like sometimes and it's so silly but you have to see it to believe it yeah and Mm -hmm. when that that representation is not there it's hard makes it less believable and less you're less likely Mm -hmm. to dream it so who else is in the collective with you so there's midge lynn Amani, I know I'm not giving last names, but they're all in the WSL. There's Efi, Crystal. I know we're putting in the work, but we do need people around us. We do need allies. There's also an ally group um, with women who are like not like non-black women in the NWSL who have a group as well who support us, and it's been amazing. The support has been amazing. So, what are your dreams with the collective? Like, where do you see it in three years from now? Three years from now, we are just talking about our year-to-year goals, actually. And I just, without being, like, too specific, we just want to just, I just feel like 
have impact and that that there could be so many things listed under that but have clinics that you know little girls can come to in you know rural, like areas that are you know underprivileged mm-hmm. and just and when covid like lets us like having mm-hmm. just different like functions and events that we could have and actually like creating relationships with these people in in different in different cities because we are also doing mini pitches so i think there's about there's gonna be 12 in different cities around the u.s and those are being built and so like just different events there whether it's mentorship programs or health and wellness maybe not just with soccer specifically but just health and wellness in general Mm -hmm. i feel like mental awareness i feel like there's so many things that we can do and that's why I like can't be so specific, but just having impact on, you know, to, for the black community and like sticking with our, our missions and our principles for sure. I love that. I actually just heard a quote today. Um, I was listening to something on clubhouse and it was this millionaire and he was like, you can influence people at a distance, but you can't impact them unless you're up close. Mm-hmm. And that meaning like wow. you need, like getting up close in person and making a connection with someone one-on-one, that's impact. Yes. But like, you know, like if you're a famous social media account, you, you can influence people, but it's like the connections are missing mm-hmm. sometimes. So yep. I think that's so cool that like, that's a goal for you guys. You want to like meet the, the young players who, and, tr- yeah. and connect yeah. with them so that it like influences them and inspires them to stay in the game or to even sign up for a soccer team, you know, cause like there's exactly. so many girls dropping out of sports nowadays right. but right. that's super powerful and we're so excited we just want to we want to promote you guys and help and support you guys as much as we can thank you so much seriously that means a lot seriously absolutely are you going to um cross your two like are you gonna have fashion involved with this or is that s- totally separate because i know like you're you're into fashion design as well yeah well that's pretty separate like with my own brand and as well is like what I want to do after soccer so but yeah fashion has always been a huge part of me and I like at times when I didn't even know it like just like I just think back to growing up and even high school college people would use me for like fashion inspiration or like ask me what to wear give my advice and I would never think anything of it and in my family I'm kind of like the fashionista but I didn't like it was just a passion you know like I don't know. It's just like a passion. And so as I, you know, as, as this kept happening, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe people really do need fashion advice or if I can design and create pieces of my own, like maybe the, you know, so. That's so cool. Yeah. So it's like, been fun. Like you, you, what your passion for fashion is so important because like beyond soccer, when you stop playing soccer, maybe you won't have as much of an identity crisis <laughs> because you, ha- you know, like you're interested in other things. And even with the black women's player collective, like that is something long-term that you guys can continue building, like even right. beyond sport and like beyond playing. So I think that's so important that you're like recognizing that now. Yeah, no, for sure. Like that's like my biggest advice to young athletes or I mean, whoever is just like, finding your brand, your purpose on outside of you feel what you feel like your purpose is like for so long, you know, soccer is, you know, you feel like it's your purpose or whatever. And I love soccer so much, like, or I wouldn't be playing it for this long or, you know, but I do know that there's more outside of Jamia, the soccer player. So over the years and throughout my career, I've just been building my brand and trying to find what, you know, kind of makes me tick outside of soccer and and fashion is definitely one of them so Love that. I think a lot of our listeners can really use that advice because we all have that identity crisis you know, <laughs> soccer and then it, at some point it's over and you're like what else am I passionate about what else do I want to do so it's great to before that ends for a lot of people to really think about that and think right. about how you want to impact the world and, and the best way that you can do that. So that's really cool. Thank you. All right, guys, we want to do some wrap up with some rapid fire. Yeah. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your favorite cleats? Tiempos. Nice. What has been the coolest moment of your soccer career so far? 
Definitely the national championship. <laughs> favorite pump up song or favorite artist? Drake. Don't even have to think about that. <laughs> so funny. Some, Mal just said that. <laughs> yeah, we just interviewed her and she said tiempos and she said Drake. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you have any superstitions? I'm not very superstitious. I tried being superstitious when I was in club soccer. And then we like, I could have made this PK to go to, and the whole team would go to Sweden. And I was wearing like my favorite like wristband or something. And I missed. I'm like, I'm done being superstitious. Yeah, you're I like, like, it it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Hey, I think you broke the superstition then. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> favorite pre <laughs> superstitions. <laughs> Favorite pregame meal? See, I'm not, like, see, that's another thing with superstitions. I don't, like, I don't have a meal. I have to have this before I play. But, I mean, I just need a protein and a carb. Mm -hmm. Are you not a very habitual person? I mean, not really. Not really. All right. I I I think it's good to be that way. Because then you can get kind of thrown off your course and you're still, the whole world won't fall apart. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. I kind of like being this way. But sometimes, like, I don't know. Sometimes the structure or whatever people need, but it's the nice balance in between that you need. Right, the balance. The balance. <laughs> what's your? Well, this is. I don't know if you'll have this either. I was going to say, what's your favorite post meal game? But this could be like a treat, like a special Ooh. treat. Be every game. Post meal game. I like just eating something really good that might not even be healthy. Yeah. I mean, see, like, yeah, you're right. I don't really have. <laughs> <laughs> I was favorite food is pizza, but I am basic. <laughs> but I don't really, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't have a post meal game. I'm sorry, I'm ruining all your questions. No, that's okay. Like, I didn't either, but Sour Patch Kids are like my favorite treat. Oh, okay. <laughs> weird treats. Treat. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird treat. I'm not saying, I just don't like sour candy. That's why. I'm oh, like, yeah, I'm not I'm a weird. sour fan either. Me either. <laughs> I want it so bad right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, what's your, your biggest failure you overcame? Biggest failure I overcame? Probably, hmm. Oh, wow, this is deep. We went from heels <laughs> to <laughs> just keeping on your toes. Sour right. Patch Kids to failures. <laughs> right. Honestly, it's probably not or being waived, honestly, because, you know, you put so much work in. And you believe in yourself. And then when someone just really doesn't believe, believe in you to the point that they are waving you, because there's one thing to sit the bench, but getting waved is, but then it's terrible. But then being able to come back and continue believing in yourself, yeah. continue working regardless of what someone, you know, believes, you know, the opposite is huge. So being waved and coming back from it is great. Kind of reinforces that one person's opinion of you doesn't always matter so much in the big it picture. Break you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, favorite teammate to play with? Ooh. Honestly, I have, oh, I just, I have met so many <laughs> great people in soccer, but I'm, I'm going to just say Marta because she was my idol growing up and then I yeah. got to play on the same team as her. So, she, and she's amazing. So that's so cool. That must've been so surreal for you. The first yeah, time I really was. I just with her. She probably doesn't even like, cause now we're like friends now. And it's, I probably, I don't tell her that she was like my idol growing up. So, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, it's just funny, but it, yeah, wait, it, I have a question. Like, I feel like, is there like an unwritten rule somewhere where you're not supposed to lose your cool? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, cause I would lose my cool. And then ruin it for the rest of my season. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, I actually, I definitely like, tried to like, not like, be like, whoa, you know, yeah. I was definitely trying to like, act normal. I was like, act normal, you know, but yeah. <laughs> then it just became normal. Like actually, you know, so then it was like, oh, I was freaking out for nothing. She's actually really awesome. You know, well, then you remember that they're human too. And they're, exactly. te- they're your teammate. Like, exactly. I know. So cool. Right. Um, who's, uh, the teammate that makes you laugh the most? Ooh. A teammate that makes me laugh the most. Honestly, I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna go with, like, currently. And my, one, well, I always say my roommate, but she's one of my best friends, and she gets mad when I say my roommate. Cause <laughs> it's like, oh, That's it? Like, That's all know, I am to you? <laughs> exactly. And so we have a lot of laughs, and 
we have a funny dynamic. So me, uh, oh, I don't know if you know my roommate, but Allie Prysock, she's on Houston. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Uh, who is your favorite team to watch? Favorite Men's, team? women's, whatever. Soccer? Yeah. Or, hey, no, <laughs> it doesn't have to be soccer. It doesn't have to be I soccer. Like, does it have to be soccer? But I love watching women's tennis because I did grow up playing. Mm. I get really hyped about it that. Yesterday? Um, oh, what would you say? Didn't Venus just get hurt? See, I actually, like, saw something about that this morning and kind of, like, scrolled over it, but is she is it bad i don't know i just <laughs> i just saw something on, on tv when i was working out oh no oh no yeah, yeah i was looking at when i know serena plays tonight i was looking at the times and i kind of skimmed past like the articles but oh no i hope it's not bad yeah it's true but tennis is such a fun sport to watch mm-hmm. every time it, i go watch it then i go and play and i'm like this isn't the same <laughs> right <laughs> right my boyfriend playing at the courts is not the same thing as serena or venus right <laughs> it is um Favorite stadium to play in? Ooh, favorite stadium. Honestly, in the U.S., I would say. Anywhere. Well, playing at Lyon was amazing. Was that? Yeah, that was really cool. So that probably is my number one. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh Oh, my turn. Just sorry. Totally missed that. If you weren't playing soccer, uh, what would you want to do? I keep bringing up tennis, but it was. It just, would be. It, yeah, because it was my sport with soccer, like for so long. How I, long? How old did you play it until? Um, high school. So, uh-huh. and I had to like choose, and I'm, you know, I love soccer, but I'm just like I should just continue, continue both, try to play in college or something like that. But yeah, I love tennis so much. That's awesome um what was your worst injury that you've had so I had like surgery basically on both groins like hip in 2015 yeah so that was very tragic but both at the same time yes bilateral yeah so it was crazy and it started from like I pulled my oblique and then it like went down then it felt like it was like a groin like you pulled your groin or hip flexor and then it was like compensating and then it happened to the other side. It was crazy. Oh my gosh. It was really crazy. So after 2015, my season with Western New York Flash, I actually didn't finish like maybe the last like five games because it just was bad. And I had to get surgery. And then I was like, you know, you're like always afraid, like, oh, I'm injured. And like, am I going to get picked up for Orlando yeah. or like, how's my, you know, am I going to keep my contract in New York? Cause it was, I didn't know how the pros worked after, you know, just my first year and being injured, but it all worked out. So it was good. Wow. That's crazy. That's so painful. <laughs> I, terrible, but I'm good now. <laughs> um, what's your, what's your next goal or your next big dream? Ooh, next goal or next dream I, I mean I just feel like at this level you always I don't want to speak for everyone but like national team is always a goal you know and mm-hmm. until like I retire because that's just you know we're all professionals but that that's an honor to play for your country so that's always a goal and then just honestly ironing out like my my next steps whether that be obviously I want to be a fashion designer so just getting everything together with that and then just I love like the business stuff I actually got my MBA like while playing and so it was cool because in undergrad I did like psych and like bio I thought I wanted to be a nurse but taking all the business classes and like the management classes and that whole world is so different and I got excited I love real estate um I like stocks and all that stuff so it's been cool like just working my brain and trying to figure out like what I want to do after you can do a bunch of different things too yeah yeah right nowadays you can't you don't have to pigeonhole yourself which I love yeah I I I love so so many (laughs) yeah exactly so I'm definitely not limiting myself and I do agree with you you can do so many different things and and that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Hey, you're and such it's a, exciting. I was going to say, you're such a good example of just like trying things and like surprising yourself with what you end up loving the most. Right. 
Definitely. Oh All right. Last question. What is your biggest soccer girl problem? My biggest soccer girl problem. Honestly, <clears throat> for me, it's probably being on time, like <laughs> to things. <laughs> like it's been a sh- and not even to things. I'm saying soccer because it's always been an issue. Growing up, I was always the last one to uh, show up to the club team tournaments, and that was my parents' fault. My dad would be getting in the shower right when we had to leave to mm-hmm. go to the. I'm like, I'm not making it on time. I'm gonna have to miss the warm up. Then. So that was just like a biggest fear of mine. And then in college, I was known for the last, to be the last one to show up oh, no. every meeting. And I was like on time, but then I was still the last one. I'm like, is this hereditary? Like what is happening? I, I hated that. First off, if you were on time and you're the last, still the last person to get there, you're like, great. I feel like I'm late, even though I got here on time. on time, you're late. That's like that's my philosophy. See, I need that philosophy, but I'm like, ugh, like 27. Is it too late to adopt that mindset? No, or- you know what you need to do. You need to trick yourself by changing all the clocks in your house. I literally, my car clock is five minutes ahead of time, so that I'm like, yes. holy shit, I'm only, I'm gonna be there just on time, and I get there, I'm like, yes. Yeah, See, I need to do that because even now, like, I'm like. That's just always my issue with like, cause like I've been doing soccer for so long and like time is my struggle. So being on time to soccer, is just, it's just a whole thing for Definitely. me, but I'm trying <laughs> seventh year pro or whatever. I'm, you know, I'm getting there. So good That's to know you're human. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for coming on today. This has been awesome. This is so great. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, come well, on the season and hopefully we get to see you play in person sometime yes. soon. And um, we're really excited to see where the collective goes and any way that we can help, let us know. And for sure. that our followers can help and everything yes. too to support. All righty. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>